Would you like to be able to pay with a gesture of your hands, just like a Jedi trick? Cool, right? But what if I told you that in order to do so, you must give your hands to Amazon? Hey everybody, welcome back to another video from The Dairy Monkey and today we talk about a serious and important topic. I know the introduction was a bit cheesy and a bit scary, but the topic is actually serious and it's about Amazon One, that is a new contactless payment that Amazon would like to introduce into its physical stores, physical stores that are present as far as I know, mostly in the United States. The idea of this device is that you will be able to pay contactless by putting your hand on top of a device without, as I said, any contact. So this device would just scan the palm and specifically the veins of your palm. It will be able to authenticate you and to, of course, allow the payment. Amazon would like to start by introducing it for its stores, but also in the future to think about possible applications like allowing people to enter to specific venues like at a stadium or in offices. And today we're going to discuss about the benefits and the concern of this technology, of this contactless payment system. But if you want to learn more about how it works, I suggest you to watch the video from my friend Lumi, that you can check also up here. He will explain to you how exactly this palm vein scanning system works. Now, the point that we have to start from is a big question. It is why Amazon wants to implement this technology. Well, the thing is that in 2020, due to the pandemic, we saw an increase in cashless payment systems and in contactless payment systems for obvious hygiene reasons. And Amazon would like to, let's say, lead this trend into a contactless direction by implementing this solution, you know, by implementing this palm vein scanning solution. And you might wonder, of course, if this is really necessary, because after all, card payments are pretty consolidated, they're pretty simple, they have less privacy concerns, so you might wonder why do we want to pay in this new different way using our own biometrics data? Which, by the way, is on the rise because biometrics data and biometric systems are more and more used. Think about, for example, our own smartphones, they have right now uh, fingerprint scanning, they have face recognition, voice recognition, so palm vein scanning is actually an addition to an already established category of, let's say, biometrics data utilization. And usually biometric data systems are justified by, let's say, more convenience. People say, oh, with biometric data, you don't need to use, for example, a physical item like a card, or you don't need to memorize a password because your own body is your device to authenticate yourself. And to be fair, this generates quite a hot debate. It's quite a hot topic, the use of biometrics. Biometrics are, for example, accused to be not very accurate. Sometimes they are not able to fully authenticate a person. And of course, there are also security concerns, big security concerns. For example, there is a, a very interesting example that I read about, and it was about something that happened in 2014 to the, at the time, German defense minister Ursula von der Leyen. Now, Ursula von der Leyen now is the current president of the European Commission, so, you know, a big important name. At the time, she was the German defense minister, and a hacker managed to take pictures of her hands at a conference. With these pictures, he managed to extrapolate the fingerprints from the pictures and to use these pictures of the fingerprints to fool a fingerprint scanner. So you can imagine, you might think the fingerprint scanning is already, you know, a bit dangerous because they can get your fingerprints, you know, from surfaces, from handles of doors, but in reality, they can just do it with a picture. Despite all of this, biometrics data is still being used more and more and it's kind of consolidated. So why exactly do we hear even more concerns about this Amazon One issue. Because you might wonder, we've been giving away our data, our personal data, even biometrics data for years, so why the panic for this Amazon new system is all about? Especially considering a very important fact, because this is something that I also want to stress in this video, is that this system is actually better and more secure than other biometric systems. Now, for example, consider fingerprint scanning. You know, fingerprint scanners are something that is now consolidated. You have it on our smartphones. These fingerprint scanners have been shown to be not exactly very accurate. Palm vein scanning is, in fact, more accurate because you have, for example, more data points. With fingerprint scanner, you only, you only scan your fingerprint. With a palm vein scanner, you're scanning your whole palm veins. So you have more data points to gather data. Plus, fingerprint scanners can be affected from, for example, skin conditions. If you have a cut on your finger, 
it can affect the result. But consider even a more debated and a scarier technology and system, in my opinion, that is face recognition. Now, face recognition is used in a lot of systems, also in smartphones. And the big issue about face recognition is that everybody can take a picture of your face. You know, our faces are exposed wherever we go and there are cameras everywhere. So it's very easy to take a picture of your face compared to the higher difficulty of taking a picture or at least taking fingerprints of your hands. So this is something that in face recognition technology, they would like to ensure. They would like to ensure that there is a sort of face liveness, which is what is called ensuring that what they're using to authenticate is a real live face and not like a picture. And in palm vein scanning technology, this is less of a problem because for some palm vein scanners, they use, they refer to blood flowing. So basically they refer to the actual blood that is flowing through your veins, which would be better at ensuring that you are a real person and not like a hacker trying to fool a system. Plus, of course, when you talk about face recognition, there is the big hot topic of racial biases. It has been shown that Unfortunately, face recognition algorithms may have racial biases against people of color compared to white people. So, of course, with a palm vein scanner, you wouldn't have these issues because it just takes the veins of your palm. So it doesn't matter whether you are a people of color or a white person. But still, despite these premises, we have to mention the fact that there are some security issues also for palm vein scanning technology. For example, in 2018, a couple of researchers, they managed to get pictures of people's hands and from these pictures, they managed to get the vein patterns of their hands and to reproduce with wax, so the wax models, a reproduction of the people's hands and use them to fool a palm vein scanner. So there are also security issues for this technology, unfortunately. See, you have to be worried it's the mark of the beast or something like that. It's probably what you have seen or heard when commenting about this technology. And it's kind of a weird comment in my opinion because this technology does not require any implantation, doesn't require any, you know, chip. People are worried about chips, you know, you are going to implant your chips. But in reality, there is no chip required because it just scans the veins of your palm, so there is no body modification. But still, there are some concerns that need to be mentioned. And the thing is that these concerns are not about the technology per se, because the technology is not a pro the problem. Of course, it has some security issues, but that's not the big point that people are discussing about. One is, for example, about the data. So now this system gathers your data, you know, about your palm veins. And where is this data stored? On our smartphones, fingerprint data, is supposed to be stored on the smartphone per se and used for authentication. But Amazon has said with, with this Amazon One solution, the data is supposed to be stored in the cloud, you know, so on some servers somewhere else. And who has access and ownership to this data? It has to be made clear. And is it possible that this data can be accessed by hackers, by third parties or by governments? That's a big serious topic. But even a bigger topic is the fact that it's Amazon per se that is doing this. You know, people are sometimes scared because oh, Amazon, it's a big evil corporation. Amazon is a corporation that wants to sell products. You know, it's its purpose to make profit, which per se is not bad. But the fact that a company that is selling products has so, so much information about you, you know, not only Amazon knows where you live, and who you are. Now he knows also which are your movements, you know, where are you going to, to buy groceries and do all this kind of stuff. And people might be legitimately scared about this, about a company that is now knowing so much about you. So I want to give you the key takeaway, at least for me, which is that the technology is not the problem, you know, the mark of a beast is not the problem per se. It's how we use this technology and how we use all the data that we why might want to gather about ourselves. That's the big issue. So let me know in the comments your opinion about all of this. Let me know if you think that this is really the mark of the beast. And if you want to watch more of these videos, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn also how all of this works, I invite you to watch the video from Lumia at the Benchtop. In any case, I thank you very much for watching and I see you next time.